Late last weekend, the current head of the U.S. Treasury Department, Janet Yellen, was asked point blank during her visit in China about the potential implications for the upcoming BRICS currency trade settlement system. Thank you, Madam Secretary. Um, the uh, Russian uh, government has announced that the, uh, it, it will launch a BRICS currency in August, and I wonder if you had a chance to speak with the Chinese about that effort. You've spoken here and in, in other venues about not wanting to see any countries being forced to choose sides. This particular move would create essentially a parallel currency to the U.S. as the world's reserve currency. Can you, you know, come up in your conversations? And you also talked about the um, head of the BOC. The Chinese government has not yet announced that he will be taking place. Is it your understanding that Pan, Pan will take over as central bank governor? Thank you. So on the currency issue, I just want to reiterate what I've said in the past, which is I think the United States can rest assured that the dollar is going to play the dominant role in international uh, transactions, facilitating international transactions and um, serving as a reserve currency in the years ahead. Um, I don't see that role being threatened by any development, um, including the one, one that you've mentioned. Uh, I've said previously and would reiterate that um, because of the role of the dollar and its um, ability to enable us to um, implement sanctions, there certainly is motivation in countries around the world to find an alternative. But um, all the data of which I'm aware shows that the dollar is overwhelmingly close to 90 percent um, used in international transactions. And I don't think that there is uh, an alternative that could possibly displace that for the foreseeable future. Janet Yellen's near 90 percent fiat U.S. dollar usage in international transaction statistics she just cited is misleading, as the data is from fiat currency trade pairings. The true figure needs to be divided by two, as currency pair data adds up to 200%, given that there are always two fiat currencies involved. So the truth is the still dominant fiat U.S. dollars are nearer to 43% of settled transactions, and the implication that 9 out of 10 fiat transactions involve fiat dollars in international trade is erroneous. It's currently closer to about 4 out of 10. And that figure is likely to shrink further, given a few of the following reasons. Last month, the U.S. Biden administration confirmed its new chair of the Council of Economic Advisors, one Jared Bernstein, who in 2014 argued to, quote, dethrone King Dollar in a New York Times op-ed, stating point blank that we needed higher persistent inflation rates and that having the world's reserve currency is a privilege the USA can no longer afford. Now, since the 2008 global financial crisis, the BRICS nations had nearly quadrupled their admitted official gold reserves. And last year in 2022, while central banks mostly in emerging markets bought more official gold bullion reserves collectively than has ever been recorded in history, the world's central bank of central banks, the BIS or Bank for International Settlements, was also publishing white papers and YouTube videos celebrating its successful MCBDC pilot program involving the central banks of China, Hong Kong, Thailand, and the UAE, the largest hub for Russian gold imports following U.S.-led Western financial sanctions. This MCBDC system is perhaps the next iteration of major sovereign trade settlements, and by its direct bilateral design, it will likely prove to be long-term bearish for fiat U.S. dollar demand when it likely comes to fruition soon enough. Meanwhile, reports from Reuters this week confirm what we have been suggesting is also likely inevitable. The Shanghai Futures Exchange is looking to expand its commodities warehousing network outside China and is examining systems and regulations in the sector overseas to resources with direct knowledge of the matter told Reuters. China's dominant commodities bourse has a domestic network of 216 storage facilities for futures contracts, including metals traded on its market, plus other materials such as rubber. Quote, Shanghai Futures Exchange has the intention to expand into overseas warehousing. They are working out what they want to do, how they want to do it, and when they want to do it, one of the sources said. Ramping up its global presence in metals warehousing would put the Shanghai Futures Exchange in direct competition with the London Metals Exchange, 
which dominates the industry outside China, potentially challenging London's position as the center of global metals pricing. China, the world's largest consumer and producer of industrial metals such as copper, wants domestic players to be able to exert more influence over prices, the sources said. Of course, this article didn't cite the fact that China is also one of the world's largest consumers of gold and silver, and the same would apply as they cited about copper. Surely, China wants more influence over the value of gold and silver moving forward. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov also spoke this past week regarding BRICS trade settlement related matters at hand. В качестве главной резервной валюты доказал свою ненадежность, доказал, что страна имитент. Если у нее вдруг возникнет желание кого-то наказать без раздумья, будет злоупотреблять своим положением. Поэтому, конечно же, многие страны задумываются над тем, как избежать подобного влияния, как снизить зависимость от тех, кто вот доказывает свою такую предвзятую геополитическую, эгоистичную геополитическую позицию. Это не единственное предложение, о котором вы упомянули. Были предложения президента Лулы, президент Бразилии, который предлагал рассмотреть возможность чуть ли не единой валюты для стран Латинской Америки и Карибского бассейна. Он же предложил не так давно обсудить эту проблему в целом, в рамках саммита БРИКС, который состоится в августе этого года под председательством Южноафриканской Республики, есть и другие идеи, которые вот идут в этом направлении. Эксперты по-разному оценивают возможности создания единой валюты, возможности создания э, расчетных хабов, но у всех экспертов, которые думают на перспективу, э, на лицо стремление содействовать выработке если не единая валюта, то платежных механизмов, которые будут ограждать всех участников процесса от произвола любого внешнего игрока. Я считаю, что это здоровый процесс. Hello, this is James Anderson on behalf of SD Bullion. Smash the like button if you enjoy these Bullion market updates. And be sure to visit sdbullion.com forward slash sweepstakes to enter our free 500 ounce Silver Eagle coin giveaway. Want to win 500 Silver Eagle coins just like this guy? Yeah, this is Kevin. Hi, Kevin. This is Dr. Tyler Wall, CEO of SD Bullion. I'm calling to you to let you know that you won the SD Bullion giveaway of a monster box of 2022 Silver Eagle. Unbelievable. That is awesome. <laughs> so click the link below for your chance to win. Good luck to all of you out there who enter our free 500 ounce American Silver Eagle coin giveaway sweepstakes. The silver and gold derivative markets had positive spot price action this week, likely bolstered by a weakening fiat US dollar relative to other major competing fiat currencies. The spot silver price closed near the $25 an ounce bid mark, while the spot gold price finished just below $1,960 an ounce bid. The spot gold silver ratio shot downward, strongly finishing at 78. As we await the likely recession admittance to come, worrying data like this ballooning credit card delinquency chart illustrates that the U.S. consumer-driven economy is growing historically weak. Credit card delinquencies at small banks are now past their 2008 GFC and 2020 pandemic shutdown highs. Long-term silver chart bulls were out this week conveying the bullish setup for spot silver prices to come using past bull market breakouts as potential proxies for what may be coming. And while this rocket ship bullishness might be a bit premature given the threat of recession and further financial crises on the horizon, Nikki Shields had a few interesting points on silver's long-term technical structure and how it tends to outperform with relative fiat US dollar weakness. She tweeted, Yes, silver has done a lot of work the past 20 days, up 250 an ounce, 12% since the June lows, but the monthly technical setup is running into long-term downtrend line, extending back from 2011 $50 highs. There's also a pennant formation, 2020 lows to 2021 highs in play. 
it's something to monitor, especially if outsized positioning in US dollar and bonds, if it's all about the outsized shorts and bonds, continue to unwind. Silver versus DXY monthly correlation is negative 0.61. DXY versus gold over the same 13 year time frame is only plus 0.1. When it goes, it'll go. All this past week, the fiat US dollar DXY index looked terrible and sold off strongly. So it was no surprise to see spot silver in fiat US dollar terms climb. Now turning back towards the Eastern silver demand side of this equation, China's Shanghai Futures Exchange continues to show strong physical silver offtake from its mainland warehouses, with nearly 50 metric tons departing this week. That's just over 1.6 million ounces of silver, or just over 16 of these four-story silver 1,000 ounce pallets that hold roughly 96 1,000 ounce silver bars, much of which are likely headed into rapidly expanding Chinese solar panel infrastructure. Banks are beginning to more explicitly report the building bullish situation for silver at the moment. This week, ANZ Bank stated the following. Silver market to enter a period of tightness unseen for decades. Silver and structural deficit amid surge in demand from solar industry. Quote, due to its high electrical connectivity and durability, silver has become important to the solar industry. When the installation of solar capacity rapidly growing, its role as industrial metal is developing. This year, China is expected to add nearly as much as the total installed capacity in the U.S. By 2025, we expect industrial demand for silver from solar to make up 50% of total demand. This will place increasing pressure on supplies. Growth in mine production is largely beholden to other metals projects for which silver is a byproduct. Scrap, which makes up nearly 20% of supply, is also lagging. Above ground inventories remain plentiful but have dropped sharply over the past couple of years. We estimate the silver market is entering a period of tightness unseen for decades. This may not be alleviated by higher silver prices. Well, given that the aggregated Eastern world silver price data from 1970 until now in 2023, that data has now aggregated to nearly $315 an ounce silver, while Western world derivative suppressed spot price is still lagging pathetically, negative 50% below its seemingly ancient, still nominal record price high of 50 an ounce. My suggestion on this channel still stands for the eastern and western silver markets to come back into equilibrium, it's going to require substantially higher spot prices for silver and much higher values in terms of what it can purchase in real world goods and real world services. By the time that happens, those who held silver from here to there will likely be very happy that they patiently did. That's all for this week's SD Bullion Market Update. As always, to you out there, take great care of yourselves and those you love. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button and share it with those you love. Subscribe to our channel and hit that alert button so you know when we publish new bullion market updates.